hey what's up guys here with another video and uh for this video i'll be doing like a small tutorial about how to use like dip pens and stuff so here i got some uh you could use almost any kind of ink as long as it's not too thick and so for this one i'm using the kohinoor ultra draw ink it's waterproof so it's cool if you uh paint over it as long as you're not putting on too many thick layers but um here i got two different nibs this one i got the zebra they're the G-Pen nibs, so it's these. One of these lasts like a couple of months, depending on how many, um, how long I use it for. Most of the time I use brushes, so these last months for me. But um, I use them for detailing and stuff like that. I prefer the G-Pen over the, this one's the Hunt uh, Crow Quill, 102 Crow Quill, I think that's what it's called. But um, I prefer this one more, because if you use them lightly, they get the same lines. So it doesn't really matter, honestly. I mean, I'm not the best with these pens, but I do use them a lot. And I usually, there's really no difference when I use these. Like this one might be thinner and it's easier to get thinner lines. But if th this one, if you get thinner and thicker lines, why keep switching? Just, I use this one more. But um, you do you, you know, just uh, test them out for yourself and see which kind you like better. Oh yeah, and the... The pen holders don't really matter. You could get, there's a bunch of different ones online. This one here, I have the same brand as the ink I have, the Kohinoor. And, you know, it's a good brand. I like their stuff. But yeah, I'll just draw something here and uh, see what happens. So usually when I dip the, the ink, I get it in there. And then I wipe it on the side of the, the ink well. So you get a clean tip like that and you're ready to draw. So when you draw, you got to make sure that, you know, you're holding the pen right. So you don't want to be holding it this way if you're drawing, of course. You know, you got to make sure that that tip, it lands on the paper and it, the ink can flow out correctly. So you just got to test it out for yourself and, you know, try it out. Experiment on a piece of paper until you feel comfortable with it and you get lines to the quality you want them to be. So right now I'm just going to start drawing, sketching with it. So I like to sketch with these. Because, like, you get really cool lines and stuff. But, um, I usually, I, I like sketching with these, but I don't do it as often as I want to. Because you always have to have the ink on the side, so it's easier to sketch when you have a pen or a pencil, right? But here we'll just draw something quick. And what I like about these pens is that they're pretty sharp, so they kind of, it gives this nice feeling of traction on the paper that you don't get with other pens. And especially, you know, um, that's the best thing about also traditional drawing is that it's not like digital, where in digital it just feels very smooth. And that's one thing I don't like about digital screens, I mean digital pens, is that it just, they always feel smooth, unless you get like a special screen for them. But yeah, especially these pens here, they got very, they're very rough on the paper. So, it just feels nice. But here, you could see, like, I'm not pressing too hard with the pen. If you press really hard with it, you can get, you know, thicker lines. But I tend to just build them up as I go along rather than, you know, get heavy lines. Like, see, like that, how if I press hard enough, I get a thicker line. But I don't like to do that as much. Maybe towards the end when I have a more solid drawing out, then I could start to go heavy with the lines. But right now, I'm just sketching with it, so I'm just trying to get very thin lines you know build up the drawing with the lines as i go along see that was all one dip right i hear a lot of people complain about traditional tools and say oh you got to keep dipping the brush or you got to keep dipping the, the the pen 
But that's probably because you wipe it too much, you know? It's, there's, there's plenty of ink on it. I know people are afraid that the ink might, like, you know, drop off the tool and then ruin the drawing. But if you're using the tool correctly, it won't happen. And if you're using ink that you were, you know, you, um, you're used to and you know it won't do that, you know, it'll feel safer. This side of the face looks a little bit higher, but that's fine. You could always lower it. So for when you're sketching, uh, I've noticed one thing that helps me out a lot is when I'm sketching like uh, the shadows of different parts of the face. And I like to like make sure that the shadow kind of moves in the same direction as whatever the, the plane is that I'm drawing, right? So here, let's say on the nose, the nose is going down. See how those lines kind of make you see the direction that the shape is going, right? And then here I kind of, you know, see that? Go to the direction that the shadow is going. And then here for like flat shadows like this, I just, you know, block them in with lines. Let's give them like some kind of like fur armor. One thing that I've also um, noticed helps out with uh, with using these pens is making sure that the ink you're using is more on the watery side rather than the thicker side. Because if it's too thick, it doesn't flow right. I remember when I first started using these pens, it, uh, it would always feel very difficult because I would be using, I would have no problem with the brush, right? But then I'd use this pen and I'd be like, why is it so hard to get lines out? Why is it so difficult to just move the tool across the page? It's because the the ink. You gotta make sure that the ink is the right quality. You know, the right consistency. You see how like you could also move it back and forth? Like I see a lot of tutorials, they just say, you know, move the move the pen in one direction, like this, you know? You gotta make sure you draw. You gotta lay on the paper and then you kinda draw. Like it doesn't really matter. Like it's it's flexible metal. Like, it's not, you don't have to be too mechanical in your movement. You know, do whatever. Like, experiment with it. Like, I don't claim to be the most experienced teacher or experienced artist, but I've usually found that a lot of online tutorials always give you one method to do things, and then they don't really encourage much, you know, difference in technique like most old school drawing books like tell you like you can't really learn drawing and painting in an exact manner from somebody you have to go out and do it you know you it's it's like a, it's not an actual science you know this stuff is it's very for lack of better words it's like expressive you know everybody draws differently 
but of course you can't just draw whatever you want and say it's good you know you gotta it takes a long time before you can say what you're drawing is you know it's of good quality you know to a certain degree to a certain degree uh drawing is still you know it's uh a lot of it can still be viewed uh viewed like uh objectively you know it's not all subjective it's like if you're trying to draw a head and it doesn't come out looking like a head, then you're doing something wrong. And that's why, of course, you got to practice until you get it right. But don't let that stop you from being expressive in your drawings and the way you use your tools. Because at the end of the day, the way you use your tools, it's going to be different. Because, you know, not everybody likes to hold stuff the same way. Like... Uh, I encourage you to like look at different tutorials and people that teach. You look at the way they all hold their, you know, the pens and pencils and brushes and stuff. Everybody kind of holds it, hold it differently. You know, there's not really a consensus on how you should hold the stuff. You know. I usually hold my stuff like towards the end like that because, you know, I get more flexibility in my movement. Lighter line and sketches always like give a nicer feel. It's always the most fun. Drawing stuff very technically can get boring pretty quick. So here I kind of just got a basic outline for what I'm going to do. Sometimes as like a little cheat, you could just kind of just draw with shadows. It's not cheating. I mean, it's an actual thing you could do. And it makes things simpler, you know? See, with that shadow, it kind of makes a sword pop out more. Hands are probably the hardest thing to draw when you're just using pen, you know, well, because they usually take a lot of planning. So I'm just going to draw like a basic, very basic looking hand. One thing that also um, helps out a lot when you're drawing with these kind of pens is that the more you use them, sometimes the better they get. But once you use them too much, the tip starts to wear out. So when you first get the pen, you'll find that the metal feels a bit too uh, unflexible. And after using it for a while, you'll realize that the metal kind of gets broken into and it feels uh, more, 
more flexible when you use it. So that's always a good thing. some kind of like pattern here to make it look like they're more of a not gauntlet some kind of hand armor let's add some kind of design on this also, what's cool about these pens is like the kind of designs you could do. It feels very, um, it's not because these pens are limiting, but it feels like the motion of these pens makes, not calligraphy, but calligraphy type, uh, calligraphy type shapes easier, I feel. So when you're trying to get like curves and stuff, it just does feel easier with this type of pen. And also like the kind of uh, fluidity, I really like it. Like once I start sketching with these, it's pretty hard to stop because it just like, it feels very pleasing to draw with these. I mean, that seems uh, pretty finished. Now you could always add like a, see, you could just go in thicker with the, with the lines and add in. We also got to worry about those when, if you're ever going to paint over them, sometimes if the ink isn't watery enough, these could be very thick. And once you go over them with uh, water, it can like uh, ruin the watercolors or whatever wash you're doing. They leak into it. So you got to be careful with that. But also, you see how when you also hold the pen towards the end like that, you could do more exact shapes. I mean lines. You'll do more accurate lines. Well, you also run out of ink faster when you when you use thicker lines. I mean, that's a given, right? But yeah, you could use those uh, thicker lines to just put that final touch of, um, you know, where you want the eyes to go to. Not the eyes to go to, but like where you could uh, differentiate your shapes from other shapes. You know, make them stand out more. Like that. There we go. All right, Let's sign it somewhere over here. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you learned something. Hope it was a fun video. And uh, get out there and practice. Thanks for watching. Laters.